and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this is Lesney's 20B ERF 68G truck, in the matchbox range from 1959 until 1965. All examples were painted blue and had an EverReady batteries decal adorned on each side, along with their For Life slogan of the era. Very early castings had crimped axle ends, but they promptly shifted to rounded, while models could be found with black, grey or silver plastic wheels. The wheels don't turn at all well on mine, so they may need surgically removing. Here's a little Minter example, and here is a real ERF KV8 wheeler on which the casting is based. It replaced the flatbed stake truck, which shares the same ERF cab as the 11A and B petrol tankers, 26A cement mixer, and the 35A horse box. These V-type cabs were much more angular than the KV, which launched in the 50s, featuring one of the first applications of curved glass in a commercial vehicle. Its distinctive oval grille helped to set it apart. That WD-40 has worked wonders on the seized up wheels as I rotate each in opposite directions to loosen them. Once they are all travelling freely, I remove the burr from the axle end and release the wheels. The wheels are a little rust stained and the axles remain very rusty, so I grind the rust off the metalwork with my drill and wash the stains off the plastic with soap and water. An uncomplicated model it's already time to strip that paint. The board at Foden didn't agree with Edwin Richard Foden's opinion that the future of commercial vehicles lie with diesel power. So, in 1933, he and son Dennis left and started ER Foden and son Diesel. By 1939, the ERF range had grown to three models, and was a well-established name as Britain went to war. 1948 saw the introduction of the aforementioned V-Type cab, before the Radical KV launched in 1954. In 1996, ERF were taken over by Canadian firm Western Star, who then sold up to German firm MAN in 2000. British ERF manufacturing ceased in 2002, when all production moved to Austria, and the name was finally dropped in 2007. The model gets a coat of TS15 blue, as I use up the dregs of an old can. Like all castings of this age, shades can really vary model to model, from light to dark. The front end was enhanced with silver trim, covering the grille, headlights and front bumper. So I reattach all eight of my wheels, and then chrome the ends of each axle using my Molotow pen. I shall be applying my EverReady decals shortly, but let's just have a brief word on them. The company was founded in 1896 as the American Electrical Novelty and Manufacturing Company, although a predecessor dates back to 1890. Its name changed to the American EverReady Company in 1905, selling flashlights and batteries under the EverReady trademark. The following year, the British EverReady Electrical Company formed and became independent of its American parent in 1914. EverReady dominated the British consumer battery market for decades, before the company was sold in 1992 to Ralston Purina, then owners of the American EverReady Company. Here are my decals, which look the part before I've even applied them. Early decals were orange, white and black, but switched to red, white and black approximately halfway through the production run. These were ever so easy to apply and are very high quality. I'll leave a link to the store I bought them from in the description. The American EverReady company had marketed their alkaline battery as the EverReady Alkaline Energizer between 1968 and 1974. From March 1980, these were rebadged as Energizer. In 2000, owners Ralston spun off EverReady and listed on the New York Stock Exchange as a holding company, Energizer Holdings, in which EverReady continued as a daughter company. Now though, less battery chat, this is what you came here for. This 20B ERF 68G truck could barely move under its rusty axles. 
Its paint was blistered and flaky, and it was missing nearly all evidence of its decals or its silver trim for that matter. This battery truck was looking pretty flat, and it needed a bit of a recharge to zap some life into it. And here is how it looks now. The truck now has these excellent reproduction decals covering the sides, while that central oval is prominent having been coated in chrome. The wheels have washed up well, with all remnants of rust now gone. Equally, the axles turn freely now after removing the layer of rust that was covering them. The blue is slightly darker than that of my before footage, but as I always say, the shades tended to vary a lot on these early castings, so getting an exact match is a really tough job, especially using these rattle cans. The front end highlights make such a huge difference to this casting in my opinion, and I can't wait to get it out on display. Speaking of which, I've got a little something to complement this truck, which I'll show you in just a sec. Please do leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already, and become a Patreon supporter if you like. So here's the complimentary discharge battery with that for life slogan on it to accompany it. Thanks for watching guys, bye for now.